Shri Gauranga Nityananda Shri Adaita Chandra Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrindam Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Shri Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan Chapter 21 of Jaiva Dharma a te Two Tales of Spiritual Seekers is a subtitle. Two Tales of Spiritual Seekers. Chapter 21 of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Jaiva Dharma is called Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. So I'm very uh, enthusiastic to get to this portion of the book to share all of this wisdom with you. Um, so we'll, we'll start with this chapter and up to the conclusion of the book. It will be very uh, exciting with all this uh, wonderful information that Srila Bhakti no Thakur shares with, with all of us and that I can share with you. So the chapter begins, an astonishing emotion arose in the hearts of Brajanath and Vijay Kumar. That is after they have been sitting with the Babaji for some time and hearing all the wonderful wisdom, the philosophy and the, the practice of bhakti, they, they began to feel something stirring in their hearts. And so they both decided that it was necessary to take diksha from the Babaji. Vijay Kumar had in his childhood taken diksha from a family guru. Vrajanath, after his Gayatri diksha, had not taken any mantra diksha or, or Vaishnava mantra. In other words, he was a Brahmana and had been given Brahman diksha, but wasn't uh, initiated into Vaishnava mantra yet. So from the teachings of Babaji, they could understand that by chanting a mantra uh, given by a pure Vaishnava, uh, the heart would awaken very quickly with praying for Krishna. If one becomes the disciple of such a devotee, the mantra will quickly give results. Considering this, the two decided that the next morning after bathing in the Ganga at Mayapur, they would take their diksha from Babaji. <clears throat> Thinking of this, the two after finishing their bath in the Ganga the next morning, put on 12 tilak marks of Vaishnavas Om Keshavaya Namaha Narayanaya Namaha Madhavaya Namaha Govindaya Namaha, like that on all 12 parts of the body. They were previously instructed how to do this. And so they put on their 12 marks and to show that they are dedicating their body to the Lord in service. Um, then they uh, went and offered their respects at Raghunath Das Babaji's feet. Babaji was a Siddha Vaishnava. Knowing their minds, he asked, Oh, why have you come today in this early morning? They usually came in the evening, but this time they came in the morning. The two said, Oh, Prabhu, please be merciful to us uh, worthless souls. Babaji led them separately into his room and gave the 18-syllable mantra to them. 18-syllable mantra is the Gopal mantra. This is mentioned in the very beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is the life of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It uh, indicates the uh, three aspects of the Lord uh, in his worship um, as Krishna, Govinda, and Gopi Janavalava. As we progress higher and higher in our understanding, we will rise up to that aspect of understanding Krishna as he who is dear to the gopis and understand the intimacy of that relationship. So this 18-syllable mantra is very important. Uh, we call it the Gopal Mantra. Sometimes it's received uh, along with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, as it often done uh, in Govardhan, in the uh, ISKCON tradition of Srila Prabhupada. He would give the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and then after some time proving oneself, being steady in, in uh, his practice, Prabhupada would give uh, full Gayatri, which would also include the 
18 syllable Gopal Mantra. Different systems are there, but the principal idea is that this 18 syllable mantra is the principal mantra that is chanted along with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra for uh, inciting praying within the heart. Chanting the mantra, the two became mad with cr great praying there uh, immediately, instantly, as they received the mantra and chanted it. And they began to dan dance and shout, Jai Guranga, Jai Guranga. Seeing the Tulsi beads around their necks, their beautiful Gayatri threads, their 12 tilak markings, their bright faces, slight sattva kebabs, and tears flowing from their eyes, Babaji embraced them. He said, oh, today you have purified me. A true Vaishnava guru is very happy when he sees his disciples progressing. That is his goal. That is why he uh, uh, endeavors to preach, to give diksha, to uh, encourage, to teach the ways of devotion and so forth, to see his disciples advancing, not simply to, to offer, uh, not simply to receive their respect and, and like that, but to see that the, all of that is done and even in the accepting the obeisances of a disciple, that is all done with the idea of helping that disciple uh, progress in spiritual life. Repeatedly they tasted Babaji's foot dust and held it on their heads. Before leaving his house, Brajanath had made arrangements to bring some food for offerings to Mahaprabhu. The two servants arrived, bringing many delicious foodstuffs. Vijay, Kumar, and Brajanath, with folded hands, told the Vaishnavas that they should offer the items that they had brought to Mahaprabhu. The manager of Shiva Sangan had the pujari cook the items and offered them to the Panchatattva. Conches and bells reverberated. Taking kartals and mridangas, the Vaishnavas began singing the Boga Artik song in front of Mahaprabhu. Many Vaishnavas gradually gathered to, and began to display bliss. With increasing joy, the ceremony ended. There was a place in the hall where Vaishnavas all assembled to take prasad, and the words Harinama were shouted. All the Vaishnavas gathered holding water pots in their hands, and they began to recite prayers for taking prasad, and thus they sat down to eat. So it's a, a traditional also that one should feed the Vaishnavas at the time of taking diksha and, and uh, either uh, make arrangements for preparing the feast or bringing the articles to be cooked for the deities. In any case, all the assembled Vaishnavas should be uh, pleased uh, by your offerings. And uh, this is a, the traditional way after taking diksha, one should honor all the Vaishnavas, even taking the dust from their feet. Brajanath and Vijay Kumar did not want to sit because they thought of taking the devotees remnants later. They were serving the Vaishnavas, so they weren't going to sit amongst them uh, to show respect, they stood. That is, they honored the Vaishnavas by not taking and later on taking their remnants. The main Babaji's made them sit though and said, your household, household the Vaishnavas, we are fortunate to offer our respects to your feet. It's an interesting, uh, uh, way that the Babaji's see the householders, they see them in an exalted place because such souls are always engaged in serving uh, other Vaishnavas. Brajanath and Vijay said, oh, you are the great souls. You are renounced Vaishnavas. We would be fortunate to take your remnants. If we sit with you, we will be offenders. And the Vaishnavas said, no, there is no difference between householder Vaishnav and renunciate Vaishnav. We are all Vaishnavas. The difference in Vaishnavas arise from the amount of bhakti only. Therefore, we see that there are many renunciate gurus and also uh, householder gurus. What is the uh, criteria is the uh, degree and amount of, of devotion that is within the heart. That, that's the only difference, they said. The difference in Vaishnavas is only seen in the amount of bhakti. While speaking in this way, all the others ate the prasad with the hope of attaining the prasad of their guru, their maha, the maha prasad of their guru. 
Vijay Kumar and Brajanath began to wait, keeping the prasad in front. As they ate, the Vaishnavas noticed this and said to Babaji, O oh, best of devotees, be merciful to your two new disciples. Otherwise, they will not eat. They were just waiting. Hearing this, Babaji offered some of his prasad remnants to the hands. He went personally and put it in the hands of his two disciples. Thinking of this as the greatest wealth, they received it saying, Om Shri Gurave Namaha. They honored it. Shri Gurave Namaha. And then began to honor the prasad. That this was the blessing of their Gurudev. that gave them prasad right from his hand. Oh, Jai Shri Gurudev. Shri Gurave Namaha. As they were eating, there are shouts of Sadhu Svatana. Uh, also glorification of the prasad. And the hall of the Shivas Angan appeared most glorious. As they were all taking prasad, devotees then glimpsed a vision of Shisachi and Sita and Malini bringing prasad and Mahaprabhu and his associates eating. Devotees recollected the verses of Jagadananda's Prema Vivarta, in Mayapur, Guranga performs eternal pastimes. By the strength of Sukriti, some devotees can see those pastimes. As they were all assembled there in Mayapur taking prasad, that vision of how Mahaprabhu lived there and, and was served by Sri Sachi Devi and others. And they, they began to visualize all this. As long as they could see this pastimes, the Vaishnavas remained stunned. They couldn't even continue eating. After some moments, when the pastimes disappeared, looking at each other's faces, they were astonished. They all began to cry that this was a miracle, that the Lord appeared before them, uh, showing how he takes the prasad. One cannot describe the astonishing taste of that prasad. All the Vaishnavas said, these two young brahmanas, have received the great mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The pastimes of Goranga have appeared at their festival. Brajanath and Vijaya said while weeping, we are fallen, worthless. We know nothing. We have been able to see by the mercy of Guru and you Vaishnavas, only by your mercy and the mercy of our Gurudev. After Prasad, taking permission of the Vaishnavas, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath went home. From that day, they began to observe daily rules, such as offering respects to the Guru, after bathing in the Ganga, seeing the deity, doing Parikrama of the Tulsi Devi. In this way, they learned a little every day. They began to engage in the Vaishnava procedures of, of honoring, honoring the Vaishnava, honoring the Guru, honoring Tulsi, all of this. After four or five days after completing the evening rites at Shiva Sangan, after Artik Sankirtan, the two sat in Babaji's hut and asked, Prabhu, oh, we have been able to understand very well the practice of Aidi Bhakti that you have taught us by your mercy. Now we request that you mercifully teach these fallen souls about the process of Raganuga Bhakti. Enjoy, Babaji said, Goranga has accepted you. There is nothing that you sh should not be given to you. You've, you've gotten the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so I cannot hold anything back from you now. I repeatedly offer my respects to Rupa Goswami, whom Mahaprabhu delivered from Muslim Association and to whom he gave the teachings of Rasa Tattva at Prayag. I have surrendered completely to the feet of Raghunath Das Goswami. He was like a bee tasting the Braj Ras, whom the merciful Lord delivered from material attachment and offered to the hand of Sarup Damodar and gave all perfection. In explaining Raghunuga Bhakti, one must first describe the nature of Ragat Mika Bhakti. Brajana said, first I want to know what rag is. Babaji says, the materialist's natural great attachment to material objects after contact them is also called rag. 
Rag is what you have attachment for. When the eye sees beauty, there's an attraction to the object. And Rag develops in the heart. By uh, appreciation of an object, the desire to obtain that object is awakened. So for the materialist, they see something and a desire out of their attachment awakens. For the devotee, it is a similar thing, but it is directed towards Krishna. They see the beautiful form of Krishna, they hear the name of Krishna, and in, in their heart awakens a rag, an attachment that brings about the desire to obtain that, to obtain him. Rupa Goswami has said that rag is the most intense natural absorption in an object of love. So this is Rupa Goswami's definition of rag. It is an intense natural absorption in the object of one's love. That is, by love you naturally have a uh, intensity of emotion, a natural absorption in the object of your love. When bhakti for Krishna becomes filled with this rag, that is called ragat mika bhakti. Bhakti which is filled with rag, deep attachment, not simply a ritual that you do because uh, the spiritual master said, okay, chant these rounds every day. So there, at that point, there is faith Okay, if I do this, my uh, devotion to Krishna will increase. But that devotion, as it increases, should produce rag. And that is a natural attachment, deep, deep love and attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The person who does not develop rag while following the bhakti according to the scriptures uh, does not achieve that taste. He never knows. Respect, fear, and faith operate in Vaidhi Bhakti. But greed for Krishna's pastimes operates in Ragadmika Bhakti. That is called Loliam. Loliam means an intense greed for Krishna. While following uh, Sadhana Bhakti, there is Respect, Krishna is Supreme Bhagavan. There's the idea that Krishna is God. Therefore, there is fear. Oh, I should not do this. If I uh, do this, I may um, uh, commit offense or something like this. So there's a fear while, while engaging in Krishna's service, while there is also a faith. So the, these things are, are uh, pro prominent in Vaidhi Bhakti. Respect, of course that there is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there's a natural fear that I should not uh, transgress the rules and the regulations. And, and there is faith that, that this is real, that Krishna is that Supreme Personality of Godhead, and I should worship him according to the rules that my Guru has given to me. Uh, but as one progresses, or as the uh, blossom of, of bhakti begins to grow and, and bloom, there's a greater greed or loyam intensity of desire to obtain Krishna. Brajana says, who is qualified for bhakti filled with such rag? Babaji says, just as faith in Vaidhi gives rise to the qualification for Vaidhi bhakti, so faith filled with greed gives rise to the qualification for ragadmika bhakti. So on one level of devotion, on the level of vaidhi bhakti, the qualification is faith. The first thing is you have to develop shraddha. You develop shraddha for your guru, you develop shraddha for Krishna, he is the supreme personality of Godhead, the spiritual master is the representative of the Lord, and I have res uh, respect and uh, uh, follow the rules and regulations of, of Vaidhi Bhakti because they've been given to me to do this regularly by my spiritual... So such a person has faith. The faith is the qualification for him to practice Bhakti. That is, uh, 
uh, described by Rupa Goswami. But who is qualified for the Ragatmika Bhakti is one who has developed greed, lolyam. Faith is a qualification for Vaidhi Bhakti. Greed is the qualification for Ragamika Bhakti. Uh, the desire, the intense desire, I want this. Uh, the uh, desire to taste that, how to enter into that. The people of Braj are strongly fixed in Ragatmika Bhakti with individual differences in Ras. There are differences in the flavor of their uh, relationship with Krishna, that is called Ras. But what is seen in all of them is an intense attachment and longing for Krishna. The person who is greedy for attaining the bhav for Krishna, seen in the people of Braj, is qualified for Raga Nuga Bhakti. That person who becomes greedy for that bhav, which is seen within the exalted Vaishnavas uh, of Braj, that, that is the qualification for the acceptance of this level of performance or, or uh, practice. What are the characteristics of such greed? <coughs> Babaji says, the sign that the greed has arisen is that a person's intelligence depends on greed for entering into the bobs of the people of Braj on hearing their sweetness. He hankers for that. He longs for that. For the person qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti, his intelligence is dependent on scripture and logic. Everything is has to be black and white in the book. I've read this. This is the way it is. Uh, the logic. Uh, that is the, the qualification for the first level of Bhakti understanding the scriptures, reading Bhagavad Gita, all of that, and uh, understanding the, uh, the nature of the Lord, understanding the nature of the relationship of the living being with the Lord, understanding how everything is simultaneously one and distinct from the Lord. These were the chapters that were previous to where we are now in the Jaiva Dharma. Then there was an explanation of the uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, so now we're going up a little bit higher, the next level, understanding the philosophy, which is required when, when uh, faith is awakened, you want to understand things, but it's all based upon logic. But here we're dealing with the heart. The heart is opening and there is a longing, a longing uh, which is called lolyam, a desire for the uh, greed of Krishna, the entering into the leelas of Krishna. Uh, the greed for entering into the bobs of the people of Braj on hearing of the sweetness of such bhav. For the uh, person qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti, it is all about intelligence depending upon scripture and logic. But the intelligence does not depend on scripture and logic, but on the path of rag. Is, makes one qualified for Ragatmika Bhakti. And it depends solely on the greed for the bhav of the people of Braj. So we'll stop at this point. Next week we'll pick it up where Brajanath now asks the question, what is this procedure? What is the procedure for Raganuga Bhakti? So when that awakens within the heart, what should I do? How does one uh, increase that bhav? How does one awaken that? Um, Bob, that one desires so much. Stop at this point. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Vol. Jai Shri Shri Radhe Shana.